Operation Compass, 9th of December 1940 until 9th of February 1941, leading up to the battle. On the 13th of September 1940, the Italian army invaded Egypt, reaching just beyond Sidi Barani, where they stopped. The Italians had developed an armored doctrine, but they really never used it, as they only learned from what did not work and never from when it did work. The many failures in using their armored doctrine led the Italian army to go back to a war based on massed infantry, with armor simply used as support. It was a colonial style of fighting. At uh, Sidi Barani they created five bigger camps that could not support each other. Meanwhile, the British forces were waiting for them at Marsa Matru, but they never came. The British had grasped the war of maneuver, used its material aggressively, and totally outclassed the Italians in leadership. In uh, material quality, they were no better off than the Italians, but they knew how to use what they had. So, the British waited for an Italian attack, the Italians waited for a British attack, a standoff. The British decided to move first. The British Plan, Operation Compass In uh, general, the plan was to attack Maktila with one force, while the main force would attack the open space between Nibuea and Riba and strike towards Bugbug, and then destroy the now encircled enemy expelling them out of Egypt. The British divided their forces accordingly. A smaller brigade-sized force, Shelby Force, would attack Maktila. Comb Force, a weak brigade-sized force, would block any attack from Ribia. While the 7th Armored and the 4th Indian Division took out Nibuea and Tumor and then struck towards Bugbug. Forces British under Lieutenant General R. N. O'Connor. Shelby Force, around one brigade, was east of Maktila. Comb Force, a weak brigade, were between Rabia and Nibuea. The 4th Indian Division and the 7th Armored Division were also between Rabia and Nibuea. The 4th Indian Division had three brigades, the 5th and 11th Indian Brigade and the 16th the 7th Armored Division had the 4th and the 7th Armored Brigades and the 11th Hussars. The 4th Armored Brigade had the 7th Hussar Regiment, the 2nd and the 6th Royal Tank Regiments. The 7th Armored Brigade had the 3rd and 8th Hussar Regiments and the 1st Royal Tank Regiment. The 7th Royal Tank Regiment would support the 4th Indian Division. Also available were the 6th Australian Division and the 2nd New Zealand Division, but only the 6th Australian Division would later take part. In total they had some 31,000 soldiers and 275 tanks. Equipment The 7th Royal Tank Corps were equipped with Matilda II tanks. That was an infantry support tank with a two-pounder gun and one machine gun. However, the armor were between 20 to 78 mm. It was a slow tank with a top road speed of 26 km per hour and off road it only made 14 km per hour, but the armor was very sick for the time. The rest of the tanks were cruiser tanks, Mark 1, 2 and 3, which were faster, also carrying a 2 pounder gun but had less armor than the Matilda 2. Italian forces, 10th Army, the 22nd Corps had the 61st Division, situated between Casala and Fort Capuzzo. The 23rd Corps had the 62nd Division, situated between Sidi Omar to Gabar du Fares. The 2nd Blackshirt Division were at Halfaya Pass, and the 1st Blackshirt Division at Bardia. The Libyan Corps had the 1st Libyan Division at Maktila, the 2nd Libyan Division at Tumar, and the 4th Blackshirt Division at Sidi Barani. The 21st Corps had Maletti Group at Nibuea, 
the 63rd Division at Rabia and Sofafia, and the 64th Division at Bugbug. In total some 80,000 men and 125 tanks at the start of the operation. More troops would reinforce the army as the battle played out. Most of the tanks were either L3 tankettes or M1139 medium tanks and some new M1340 medium tanks. The M1139 37mm main gun in the hull and two machine guns. A max armor of 30mm and a top road speed of 32 km per hour. The upgraded M1340 had a 47mm gun mounted in a turret and 3 to 4 machine guns. Armor was still a maximum of 30mm and the top speed was around 32 km per hour. The battle starts. 8th of December 1940. Italian planes reports an imminent attack against Mactilla and Nibuea but this report never reaches the Maletti group. 9th of December 1940 Around 7 in the morning, the 11th Brigade from the 4th Indian Division plus the 7th Royal Tank Regiment attacks Nibuea and Maletti group. First, they launch an artillery barrage as a diversion and 30 minutes later they hit the weak northwestern corner of the camp where the supplies enters the camp. Italian tanks are only now being warmed up when they are attacked and the tank crews are killed by the 11th Indian Brigade. The 7th Royal Tank Regiment follows up and attacks the camp, blowing up some 15 M1139 tanks and capturing the rest. Maletti is soon killed and the camp surrenders with some 2000 casualties and 2000 prisoners. At 2 in the afternoon the 7th Royal Tank Regiment refuels, and then it and the 5th Brigade of the 4th Indian Division attacks the 2nd Libyan Division at Tumar West, in the same way they attacked Nibuea. The fighting here is a bit harder, but the camp is captured. They move on and attack Tumar East, and after 2 hours that camp is also eliminated. The Italians simply had no guns that could take out the Matilda tank. Around 3000 soldiers is either a casualty or a prisoner. Some 2000 soldiers of the 2nd Libyan Division is still holding out. Meanwhile, 4th Armored Brigade has taken Assisia and captured some 400 soldiers. Shelby Force attacks Maktila and tries to cut it off, but the 1st Libyan Division manages to retreat through the weak screen, heading towards Sidi Barani. Shelby Force is now joined by the 6th Royal Tank Regiment, from the 4th Armored Brigade. 10th of December. The 4th Armored Brigade cuts the road between Bugbug and Sidebarani and pushes towards the city. From the south, the 16th Brigade and 5th Indian Brigade from the 4th Indian Division is also moving towards the city. 11th Hussars are now observing Rabia to make sure the Italian 63rd Division cannot unobserved counterattack. The 7th Armored Brigade is in reserve. Italian forces in Sidebarani are deployed holding 8 fortified positions, each position held by about 1 battalion. In the city are the 4th Blackshirt Division and the 1st Libyan Division. 16th Brigade attacks the city during a very cold morning. The brigade lacked artillery support. The attack is repulsed. The city is now attacked from all directions. Around 1 in the afternoon, two of the western fortified positions surrenders. The 11th Indian Brigade now joins the attack. The attack is resumed by the 2nd Royal Tank Regiment from the 4th Armored Brigade and the 16th Brigade, forcing some 2,000 soldiers to surrender, shrinking the pocket for the rest of the Italian forces in the city. Further south, around Tumor Central, point 90 is still in Italian hands. General Graziani orders the 64th and the 63rd Division to retreat towards Halfaya Pass. 11th of December British forces attacks again and the rest of the Italian units in Sidebarani surrenders in the early morning. The remnants of the 2nd Libyan Division at point 90 holds out until the afternoon. 
In total, the British captures about 38,000 prisoners, 73 tanks, for a loss of 630 British soldiers. Now follows a short reorganization phase for the British forces, while the Italian 10th Army tries to make a stand at the Halfaya, Sidomar, Solon, Fort Capuzzo line. Italian forces are deployed as follows. The 64th Division at Solum, the 2nd Blackshirt Division at Halfaya Pass, the 1st Blackshirt Division just south of Bardia at Bet Tafud, and the 62nd Division at Sidi Omar. The British forces are deployed as follows. 7th Armored Brigade south of Bugbuk, 4th Armored Brigade around Sidi Barani, the 4th Indian Division is now transferred to the Sudan, except for the 16th Brigade. The 6th Australian Division are moving up to replace it. 14th of December The 11th Hussars cuts the road between Bardia and Tobruk. The 7th Armored Brigade moves against Solum with intent to cut off the Italian forces, but it had to repair its tanks, so it could not accomplish this. The main part of the 4th Armored Brigade bypasses Sidi Omar and pushes west of Bardia. 15th of December All Italian forces are now ordered to retreat back to Bardia as the 7th Armored Brigade pushes west. 16th of December The 3rd Hussars, with support of the 2nd Royal Tank Regiment, attacks and takes Sidi Omar. The 6th Australian Division is making its way towards Bardia, replacing the 4th Armoured Brigade. By the 20th of December, Bardia is totally surrounded. The Italian forces at the city. The 1st Blackshirt Division, at 25% effective strength, holds the northern part of the defence. The 62nd and 63rd Division, who are both almost at full strength, except lacking anti-tank weapons, hold the front south of the 1st Blackshirt Division. The 2nd Blackshirt Division is held in reserve at 50% strength. Part of the battered 64th Division are also in the city. The British forces outside the city, 6th Australian Division with 16th, 17th and 19th Brigade. 3rd of January 16th Brigade opens the attack by hitting the joint between the 1st Black Shark Division and the 62nd Division in the morning. They break the barbed wire fence and stream into the gap quickly, overrunning several strong points. 7th Royal Tank Regiment advances also in the break with some 20 Matilda II tanks. Some M11 tanks counterattacks, freeing some Italian prisoners, but they are soon knocked out by anti-tank fire. The 17th Brigade attacks, pushing southeast through the break. 4th of January 16th Brigade continues to push towards Bardia under pretty heavy Italian fire, picking up more prisoners as they move forward. They are supported by the 7th Royal Tank Regiment. The Italian area is cut into two pockets, north and south. 5th of January 16th Brigade mops up the northern Italian pocket, while the 19th Brigade attacks south from Bardia together with the 17th Brigade and eliminates the southern pocket. The Italian losses are some 5,000 casualties and in total 36,000 soldiers are taken prisoners. The British also captures about 10 tanks, 100 L3 tankettes and some 200 artillery pieces. The British casualties are 500 with 130 of those dead. A few thousand Italian soldiers manages to escape to Torbruk. 7th Armored Brigade is already now heading towards Torbruk. The 6th of January 7th Armored Brigade is at El Adem. 7th of January. Most British forces have arrived at Tobruk. The 7th Armored Brigade is tasked with screening the western part of Tobruk to stop any Italian counterattack from the west. 4th Armored Brigade pushes the Italian forces from El Adem to the Tobruk defenses. 
The 7th Support Group, which is a part of the 7th Armored Division, is containing the western part of Tobruk. The Australian 6th Division is east and south of the city. The 8th Hussars and the 6th Royal Tank Regiments are withdrawn because of previous losses to refit. The supply situation for the British forces are a problem, so the attack is postponed. The Italian 10th Army is now down to only two divisions, the 61st and the 60th. The 61st Division is holding Tobruk with an assortment of other units, including some units that escaped from Bardia, in total 25,000 men. The Italian 60th Division is defending Darna, and a special armored brigade is at Makili. 9th of January The overall commander Graziani informs General Manella, who is in charge of the Tobruk garrison, that there will be no relief attempts. 21st of January there is a diversionary attack against the western part of the Tobruk defences by units from the 7th Armored Division in the area of Ras Medawar. At the same time, one battalion of the 16th Brigade, 6th Australian Division, hits the southeastern part of the front and after one hour breaks into the rear of the Tobruk garrison area. The rest of the battalions of the brigade pushes through the break and spreads out northeast north and northwest. Some Matilda tanks from the 7th Royal Tank Regiment also pushes through the break. The Italian forces lack of radio communication means it takes a long time for them to realize that the front is broken. Soon Sidi Mahmoud is captured by the 16th Australian Brigade. The 17th and 19th Brigades now joins in the attack, forcing several strong points to surrender. By the afternoon, the Italian forces finally reacts. Seven Italian M11 tanks try to counterattack, but all are destroyed. 17th Brigade captures Pilastranto and Fort Solaro. Most of the eastern part of the Tobruk defenses are eliminated. 22nd of January. The Australian 6th Division enters Tobruk and by the afternoon the city and its defenders have either been captured or are dead. Italian losses are 4 to 5,000 casualties, 20,000 prisoners, some 200 artillery pieces and 80 plus tanks. 24th of January The British keeps up the momentum. The 6th Australian Division arrives at Darna. The 19th Brigade attacks in direction of Darna but makes little headway. The 11th Hussars of the 7th Armored Division reaches Maktila, where the Italians now have a force equal to an armored division divided into three groups. Babini Group with 57 M1340 tanks and 2000 infantry between Darna and Maktila. Piana Group with 2000 men and a lot of artillery in reserve. Pignami Group with 2 battalion infantry and 72 M1340 tanks are also in reserve. Babini are ordered to counterattack against 11 Hussars who are trying to flank Darna. 11 Hussars loses 5 light tanks and falls back. The 2nd Royal Tank Regiment comes up in support and knocks out 7 M13 tanks. 25th of January 4th Armored Brigade of the 7th Armored Division tries to encircle Maktila from the west-northwest, and the 7th Armored Brigade moves to cut the road between Maktila and Slonta. Italian Babini Group has already pulled back. 26th of January Australian 19th Brigade continues to attack Darna and manages to cut the road between Darna and Maktila. One company crosses Vadi Darna. Italian forces counterattack with little success. 4th Armored Brigade is meanwhile chasing Babini Group. 28th to 29th of January. The 11th Hussars finally finds a gap south of Vadi Darna and now threatens to encircle the Italian 60th Division, who starts falling back. 
third days of January to 5th of February. The 17th Australian Brigade reaches Lonta and the 19th Brigade reaches Barca. They press on towards Benghazi. The ad hoc comb force is again created and now it rushes towards Antalat and takes up position at Via Balbia, the main road. Only 30 minutes later the first Italian truck convoy comes and they attack it. An Italian regiment tries to break through south but they fail. The rest of comb force arrives and they are placed on each side of the road. 7th Armored Brigade moves towards Skeleidima. 4th Armored Brigade, reinforced with equipment from the 7th Armored Brigade, sets out from Musus towards Antalat. Combe informs them about the situation. The 7th Hussars rushes west to cut the Via Balbia road, followed by the 2nd Royal Tank Regiment. The 3rd Hussars rushes north to cut the road from Solush and Skeleidima. 6th of February the 7th support group reaches Skleidima but is held up. The Italian Bignami group is holding the position but is soon ordered to pull out and send some help south. 7th support group follows them and occupied Solush. 2nd Royal Tank Regiment holds the hills west of Beda Fom. 7th Hussars moves north to find the northern end of the retreating Italian columns. Babini Group attacks the 2nd Royal Tank Regiment, but several M11 tanks are knocked out. More and more Italian forces are arriving from the north, engaging the British forces, forcing the 2nd Royal Tank Regiment to retreat from the Pimple. 7th of February The 19th Australian Brigade enters Benghazi. The 7th support group attacks the north end of the retreating Italian column. The 2nd Royal Tank Regiment moves down via Balbia. The Italian continues to attack Combe Force and makes some headway until the last of the Italian tanks are knocked out. Australian forces are by now at El Magro. As the last of the Italian tanks has been knocked out, the last chance of breaking through south with the main body has failed. The Italian forces capitulate. Some 25,000 prisoners are taken, with 100 tanks lost or captured. That basically concludes Operation Compass. Conclusion What started as a five-day raid by a small British force ended up with the whole of the 10th Italian army being destroyed and most of Libya captured. The Italian army had about 5-6,000 men killed, 10,000 wounded and 130,000 taken prisoners. They lost 400 tanks and some 900 artillery pieces. The British in total had 500 dead and about 1,300 wounded. It was an extraordinary operation made possible by speed, massing forces at key points and never giving up the initiative. The Italian army on the other hand never took the initiative. They made all the mistakes one could, especially at a higher level. They never really tried to counterattack. They simply fell back from one fortified position to another, none which could be defended. And they never considered retreating to save forces that could not possibly hold. This is especially true at Torbrook. They had forces to use especially the armored force at El Makili, which were a tank division in all but name. But for some unknown reason, only one third of that force was used. The rest was held in reserve for no apparent reason, which again left the initiative to the British forces, who used it brilliantly. The lack of radios in the Italian army also meant that when they were attacked, it took a long time for the other Italian forces to react. They simply did not know what was happening. An interesting side note is the letter Graziani sent to Mussolini on the 21st of December, where he states that the attack came as no surprise, he already days before had known it was coming and had put all the forces on alert. It was a self-serving letter that had absolutely nothing to do with reality. 
In reality, the 10th Italian army were caught in five fortified camps and three fortified cities, and destroyed in detail. The opposite were true for the British, who fed their successes and pushed as far as they could. Almost too far at Beda Fom, where they almost used up all their supplies before they won the battle, but they managed to pull it off. The British built upon success and worked around problems that occurred. In the next episode, in this series, we will talk about the German intervention. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe. You can also leave a comment and I will respond to that as soon as possible. I try to respond to all the comments I get. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you next time when the Germans intervene.